video preview of the Bob Thurman podcast was originally recorded January 2021 and is brought to you in part through the Tibet House U.S. Menla membership community and viewers like you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. for you, Kardak. Thank you, thank oh, you, thank nice you, thank you, you. Oh, Professor Thurman. What an honor to finally get to speak with you. Well, what an honor to speak with you. It's my own fault. I've been, because of whatever, my engineer, Justin, is somewhere else. And Thank you, Justin. We're, <laughs> we're finally getting this I'm, together. I'm used to, to having him there, so I, I stalled a lot of my podcasts. You know, I have a lot I have you. I completely Yours understand. was one of the most important ones for me, really. It's so nice to see you. I completely understand this year, the longest, shortest year in the history of years. That's right. Well, believe me, my dear, when you get to be pushing 80, short, short, there's a new definition of shortness, I'll tell you. I bet. I Push bet. time to schools like that. Yeah, okay, let me formally open it now. So I'm going to sure. do it. I'm going to make a clap. You know, and okay, Justin, remember, that's a clap. All right. So I'm so happy and honored to welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Uh, my long sought uh, conversation partner, Jessica Pimentel, wonderful actor who also comes from New York like me, although she she comes from Brooklyn. I was born in Manhattan, but Brooklyn was my Christmas Eve place because we had an aunt who lived out there somewhere that we would always go on Christmas Eve. And um, would always snow, and we would do, walk back from the subway, <laughs> this and that. So I love Brooklyn too. And um, known as an actress, she's an actor in the role as Maria Ruiz on the Netflix original series Orange is the New Black, currently filming, well, now and already filmed the seventh season. And it should go on, really, because it's so real. And I really think it was awesome. You know, I really love it. And I love your character on it extremely much. And um, the only thing is, when you were on that uh, that one that I saw, where you were apologizing for tormenting the over, <laughs> overweight guard, and yeah. uh, supposedly, and he was uh, supposedly forgiving you, and you, the, I love the way your character played that. And I, but I never got to hear how you tormented him. That's too bad. I missed that. You, I'm glad you did. It's really ugly. <laughs> it oh, was very oh, ugly. Oh, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, the whole thing. In the sense that, you know, when I see a thing like that, I feel very annoyed. Like, why are these people in there anyway? They're already nice people. We could do something. They've maybe made a mistake in relation, but usually to some arbitrary drug law or something. And so why are they there at great expense to the taxpayer instead of being in a nice school and having a nice time and like being in their homes with their relatives and so on. Exactly. You know? That's exactly what we addressed in that final season. Yes. That, uh, yes. that justice reform, uh, criminal reform, restorative justice would be of much greater use to the whole population of course, of than course. to just keep punishing people. And the majority of things that people, reasons that people were in there were the dumbest, absolute, most banal things, tiny, minor infractions that it's, just kept multiplying and multiplying because they were in that situation of trying course, to survive. Of course. of course. It's a, it's a racist um, attempt to reconstruct slavery, obviously. Oh, so there's no doubt about it and it should be fixed completely, you know, and absolutely as soon as possible, if only we could do that. But we will, we will, of course, it's just the time, uh, whatever is the time. Now the time is accelerating. I think we're going <laughs> to rise like a, phoenix out of this disaster i'm sure i think and so. the first thing to do at the new year's time is for, to chat with jessica it's so great and, but you had you were in the high school of performing arts where they made fame or which fame was based on right yeah correct you, were, were you you were in fame you're too young or something you didn't get it, into it, fame. it was right between uh when when it was two separate schools then they merged into one it was music and art and performing arts right right right. then they merged that's when i was there Fi fiorello h laguardia when it became laguardia high school i see i see and so so you sing then you're a great singer then you must be you must no i'm a terrible sing singer i scream Oh, That's why I scream in heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're I, a great singer. And you played a violin. Yes, I started off there as a violinist. I was also violin. I was you violin. Were. 
until 12, but I was stupid when I was 12. <laughs> I, I wanted to play baseball and I didn't want to practice. So I, I, I managed to get out of it really dumb. <laughs> Because I, I, I was playing Bach. I was thought my mother was a fanatic, and I started around six or seven with playing. Mm. And, uh, and then I, I bagged it, which was really dumb. But you still it play. Happens. I hope you still play. You, yes, I still play many instruments. Yeah, I play that, bass that, and guitar, violin. Oh, good. Well, yeah. I'd like to see you doing a, doing a, a female Sherlock Holmes going around playing violin. And yeah, that'd sing. be amazing. <laughs> about catching criminals anyway it's so great to chat with you and like uh, how are you feeling at the end of the year are you are you abroad or are you in the states or I, i'm abroad on? i've been in stockholm since march 17th I'll, i'll count it as the 17th because that's when the journey began really? from hopping hopping in a cab yes. literally 30 minutes before you know to get to the airport wow. knowing that the european borders were about to close my partner wow. is swedish ah. and not an american citizen and the American borders had just closed and we had plans uh, already to meet, but yes. those plans had to change. And then I got a phone call. The borders are closing Wednesday. You got to get on a plane. Oh, now. Wow. Well, that's great. You were there in Sweden. My partner's also from Sweden. Yes, I know. And, uh, and the Graham got an Otta. Mm -hmm. And I visited her mother there before she passed long, long ago. <laughs> And she lived in Gravegatan, which is off that big, uh, you know, the seaside uh, uh, street. I forgot what that's called, the big one, you know. Mm -hmm. And Gravegatan goes down the hill to that one, you know, Gravegatan, you know. Great. But I never learned Swedish. How was your Swedish? Did you learn? Since it's enough. I it's enough to get around if I get lost. It's enough to feel part of the conversation. But Swedes love to speak English here. So I know it's very It's hard. almost impossible. I'm, I'm sure. Yes, I know. <laughs> And then you it go, is. you know, turn on the TV to watch maybe some Swedish TV. It's there. It's all American shows or BBC oh, shows. Oh no, well, very little good. Swedish here. Yes, right. Well, yeah, I couldn't learn myself because the Swedish would give me, uh, you know, uh, um, what is it, uh, alcohol. You know, when we would <laughs> yeah. sit at dinner, and then I would be trying to do Swedish, and then I'd become like <laughs> completely <laughs> hopeless. So I couldn't learn. I never learned. <laughs> Either. So it's, it's very difficult, more difficult even than German or French or something. It's a difficult yeah, grammar. A lot of rules. Yes, yes, exactly. They are. But that's great. You've been enjoying it. By the way, how was the uh, sort of the idea that they were going for herd immunity and this and that and mm -hmm. they had less controls and less isolation and so I forth? I mean, as far as that? my own my as far as my own experience is concerned, my partner and I were not trying to take any risks. Oh, good. So, uh -huh. I mean, we, we also weren't living in fear locked up at home and or anything like that. But, you know, if we went out somewhere, we made sure we were outside, outdoors. Yes. There was a, yes. a, never a crowded place, always yes. washing the hands, masks if it was too crowded, oh, washing God. the groceries when you get home, things like that. But we're not generally out and about all the time around people anyway. So life oh. really didn't change that much for us. Oh, yeah. well, that's great. Well, you look really great and happy. So I think Thank Sweden you. must agree with you. Thank must you. Must have agreed with you. And uh, that's really cool. And it, I, do any of the Swedes speak Spanish with you? They're able to. So you didn't have a chance for that. Not so, not so much. But every once in a while, you'll find yourself in a group of Spanish speaking people. And sometimes oh, the Swede is the only one that doesn't speak Spanish, which is a very fun little twist there sometimes. <laughs> Right. Because then we're so desperate to speak Spanish, we, we never hear that. So when you right. finally hear it, you're like, oh, hablas español? No, de veras, de donde eres? No, oh, de no. Chile. Yo de República Dominicana. Oh, my God. We get so happy that we just start talking about Spanish food that we can't get here. <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, that's good. They can take a rest, the Swedes, and they can relax. And they like the fireiness, I'm sure, of the Spanish compared to the sort of more staid rhythm of the Swedish It's a, speech, it's a good know? combination, I think. We work had, well together. Right, right. I had some horrible jokes I used to tease the Swedes with, but I won't get into that. So <laughs> okay. listen, I wanted to really find out. I'm so excited by your amazing background in the Dharma. And you knew the Cesarme Kensur. Uh, Los Antarchen, Ken Sorimbache Los Antarchen, you knew him. That's my I heart don't know if, guru. 
Now that's so wonderful. He knew I was, uh, Geshe Wangel and I were the ones who brought him to America in the 70s. I, I long, That's long why I've been you. wanting to talk to you so much, so much <laughs> because you're part of my history. You know, you're like a uncle, uncle, professor, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> yes. Bob, you know, you're, you're, uh, yeah. you're part, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be who I am today. You're part of the reason, one of well, the reasons, you know? That's amazing. I'm so pleased and happy if I had any tiny bit. I would have known him a lot more, I'm sure, through the through the time, except Gishi Wongo moved away, you know, mm -hmm. and then he was in he was in Washington, some distance from Freewood Acres. So I never got back down to the my Dharma homeland, my own home was Freewood Acres. You know, mm -hmm. Gishi Wongo's place used to be next to the Russian church next, there on mm -hmm. Third Street. On Third and Street, that's yeah. where I found him. And uh, I couldn't believe it when I did. I couldn't even walk. I tried to run away when I first parked in front of someone was driving me and I parked in front of the 1962. I got so scared that I felt the vibe and my stomach was turning inside out and my legs wouldn't work. So I didn't want to go in. I said, let's go back. Let's go home. We'll come tomorrow. You know, I don't feel right just right now. I'm scared. I was really scared. I bet. And it, because I could feel his energy, you know, the, the energy. Well, that whole from. place in Howell, you know, if you've ever done a retreat in Howell, it's, there's no sleep happening for you. It's something <laughs> about that whole area that's always just has a special really? buzz really? to it. How did, how did you feel that? How, tell me, tell me, how did that seem to you? Uh, I was lucky enough to, you know, be forced by my teacher to do lay rooms there, you know. <laughs> Whenever, oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> um, the first one I just told him, I, I used to go and always visit him on his birthday. And I'd yes. take that long bus ride, you know, from from Brooklyn to Port Authority, then Port Authority to yes. the, to Howell, and then walk down that shady little street. Not, yes. shady, not because of trees, but it was so shady back then. <laughs> Yes. Lady back then, and uh, I would just go to bring him flowers and leave, you know? I see, um, I see. They wanted to make sure I did it on the day and not I just see. the day that we all got together. And he's just asked me, come here, you know, how are you, you know? So okay. I'm fine, I'm good, work is good. I'm thinking, I, you know, I might want to do a retreat soon. Then oh, he said okay. that the words that if you ever studied with Ken Rimshe, you know that he would say, bring me my calendar. That meant it was over for you. If you had any plans, <laughs> if you had a summer vacation planned, if you had, you know, a trip, if you were doing, he said, bring me my calendar. Uh -oh. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brought him the calendar from the wall, you know. And he said, okay, you're going to do your first letter room. Uh, start this day, finish this day, rest two really? days, rest two days. Really? Come to me when you're finished. And then we're going to do this other teaching the following Sunday. Okay. I All see. right. Did you, did, it there? did you do it there? They had a place I did for it you at or? the Anigompa, like a couple, a couple blocks away. Oh, I see. Oh, so he arranged it. And I said, I don't have a place to do it. I don't have a, my apartment. I have roommates. I can't do He said, you will do it at the Anigompa. But my job won't let me take off work. He said, yes, they will. Just tell them what you're doing. And they will tell... <laughs> He, I, there was no arguing. There was no, <laughs> so it was full freak out panic mode, you know, first time when you're 20, you know, 20 years old or something like that, doing your first letter. Really? All so yeah, good for you. 20 years old. That's yeah. awesome. And, and you just have. That's when I got started. Exactly. Yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. I met him uh, on my 18th. Uh, yeah. 18. Really? I met him at 20. Yeah. So 20 is when I took my. So life. you had, uh, you must have had some memory. Do you remember any previous lives of your own? Do you remember? That's a great uh, question. I think I have, you know, who's Of course say? you did. I think I have, have very, very, affinity. a few, a few. They weren't yeah. all good though. Some of you them were the, a little scary. You have the cheekbones, you know, you have. <laughs> You could be Mongolian or Tibetan. You should uh, definitely a lot of could. times when I see His Holiness, people okay, ask yeah, me if I'm from Amdo. Si, si, llamamos <laughs> Chinito. Chinita. Chinito. Llamamos si. en español Chinita. Si, Chinita. Un poquita. Mm -hmm. You know, they came, they came, you know, Chinese came in boats, uh, Los Angeles and Peru. Mm -hmm. And the Japanese also, they came in, the, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. You know of that. Of course, but being the also big, part Native American, we have all so many similar things. The jewelry is the same, the yeah, hair same. stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all one thing. We it all know is. this. <laughs> it is. Why do we with even keep trying? Different faces with different colors. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why I like color chakra. I especially like color chakra. You know, it has has a has a black face, 
has a red face, a white face, and the left and, and a golden face in the back, and a yellow mm. face in the back. And I like that, although I miss a green one and a blue one. But Mrs. Kalachakra has a green one, luckily. She has the green one, right. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kalachakra. She does. Exactly. She's from Malta. Can you still hear I... me? Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. I sure. clicked something by accident. Uh-oh. Aha, here we go. Now can you speak? Yeah. All yeah. right, there you are. Okay. I'm trying to get things a little bit louder in my in my headphones. Oh, sorry, there sorry. No, no, oh, no. You know, oh, you know what? It's because I wasn't, I, I, I forgot I had a microphone. Oh, my, my, there you my go. microphone was over there. <laughs> That's okay. I've heard you find this entire time. I see it. But uh, Justin didn't correct it. So I guess you were picking up the sound. I hope so. But anyway, you're the important one. So that's amazing. 18. I can't, and how did that I happen? mean, I, fir I first met Dharma. I would say, uh, oh, I'm not going to say first met Dharma. I first found what I thought was Dharma through the Tao Te Ching when I was about a sophomore, junior in high school. Really? And it really, really clicked with me. And I had several copies of it. I would carry it in my in my book bag with me. In, in I English or Espanol? In English. I'm from English. Brooklyn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if there is a translation of the Tao Te Ching. Of course, Ching, there, of course Dao there is. Dao, it's Espanol. Well, of there's course. There's a lot of coming. You know, there hasn't been enough you know, in Spanish, you know, that's, I'm, wor I'm working on that in the next, uh, in my, if I get another decade or two from 80, I'm going to oh. go back to Argentina and Chile and this and that. No, I, I'm, I, was, I have a, I have a thing. I, I lived in Mexico when I was 18 for about a year. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I really have a thing about it. And, and then I got blocked for decades and decades being over busy. Uh -huh. I'm getting back there. Good. There's no professor of Buddhist studies anywhere in any Latin country. Not one single one and not one single school. That's crazy. Well, it's but not crazy. It's the church. It's just... you know, it's like Lisa, it's Lisa. But it, I, I do feel that it is rising in popularity in uh, in Central and South America, for sure. There, I mean, like uh, MSTP has uh, Mahayana Sutra Tantra Press has several books oh, available good. in Spanish oh, at this point, and they are picking up you know, in certain, certain yes. areas for no, sure. It's great. Yeah. Some of my books have been translated into Spanish. Yes. And, uh, and I, but not enough. I'm trying to really work. I'm bringing out a couple of books next, this next year in mm -hmm. Spanish and I'm going to do tours with them and everything. I'd love you to come along. You ever want to go? That'd be amazing. A Dharma thing, but maybe you don't want to associate too much too heavily with Dharma in general. I don't know. I, I, I do. That's, I mean, okay. that's a, that's a great, you know, the, the current tightrope that you walk yeah, because yeah, people yeah. have so many perceived notions of what I Buddhism know. is and what, who I Buddhists know. are, and you don't believe in God and, I know. or, no, we do. We do. We do. We just don't think there's one that you can blame for everything. <laughs> <laughs> or one that's punishing you. <laughs> exactly. Or one you can exactly. call to punish someone else. You know? Exactly. That's, that's exactly. not why we pray, so to speak. I know. My wife is more intelligent than me, naturally. Um, one time <laughs> we, were, we were going somewhere at some big event and we were with some people who were serious monotheists. And uh, they were like, we were cruising looking for a parking place, a crowd thing. So everyone said, oh, you know, Oh, I have good parking. Oh, yes. And the they were praying to Jesus to help them yes, park. Yes, exactly. So then my wife says to him, you, mean, you want Jesus to be your parking attendant? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she said, but, you know, I love Jesus, you know. You know, the way I understand it, I'm with the Dalai Lama. And that is that, uh, you know, I learned to really appreciate Christianity more by, by learning something about Buddha Dharma, you know. I was rebelling otherwise against, and I didn't agree with some matters. I always loved baby Jesus, everybody does. But I didn't like that. I thought dad, dad was not nice to her kid, you know, like to his kid, you know, like mm -hmm. putting him up on that, putting him through this whole thing. When you know, I was I a little I girl. Go for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was a little girl, Jesus was my best friend. I lived yeah, in a very, exactly. very yeah. Christian home and we went to yeah. Bible study school sure. and I would, you know, Jesus was always with me, always my best friend. And he still he, is. He still is. is. I, he likes I agree. People who, he likes people who like Buddha. He likes Buddha. I, I agree. You and know, also, you know, a book like this? Living Buddha, Living Christ was a huge impact that helped yes. me convince my mom that I was doing OK. Oh, you know, I, I gave that book to her as a gift yes. and she's like, oh, but it's the same thing, Jesse. I said, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's true. But you know, some of the more rigid ones hate that when you say it's the same thing. The thing is the open ones do. 
I have some funny stories on that that I'll tell you another time because I don't want to take time. One lady, one grandmother, Abuelita in Costa Rica, when I once went there, Mm -hmm. really funny, but I'll tell you later. So, so that's great. So you, but you don't actually exactly remember any previous one. I also, it's funny, I totally went across the hurdle and was sure about former and future life, which I think is a really Mm -hmm. important thing. And, you know, Christianity has a future one. Mm-hmm. And then they think they don't have a past one. They think it just started from scratch. This time. Mm-hmm. You know, in the backseat of the Chevrolet. Yeah. <laughs> it started. But actually, it started, of course, long before because they were resisting in, in Dios, if they, according to their own mm-hmm. theory. They couldn't have not pre-existed in God. Of course. Because God has never begun. He's beginningless, like the like world. So, I, you know, I, there's just there are stories like that. The way but then we is. also have to remember that it's, be, it's not just religious, it's cultural. So it's not yeah, even something exactly. that you question anymore. But as far as the previous life thing, I definitely remember yes. being ordained many times. Then yeah, I had one, one life that was oh, kind of sca- scary to me, that it was a kind oh. of a dark arts life. Uh-oh. And that really kind Uh-oh. of... Freaked me out, yeah. But I mean, I'm sure we've all done good, bad, of course, everything. and everything in between. We've all been everything. Every female has been male. Every male has been female. Of course, we've all been bi in whatever sense of the word one wants. Or unicorns, exactly. Rhinoceri. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's so cool. I love that. That's really great. So then, then now you know the other thing is I want to always ask you about is that. You know, you're an actor and uh, and uh, like my daughter, too, you know, and, yes. and I think actors automatically understand the Dharma well, because when you get into a role, you have to shift identities and you learn to be resilient in your identities, not as a destructive or annoying thing, unless you have the wrong kind of shrink who tells mm-hmm. you you should rigidly be this. Mm-hmm. But if the right kind of shrink, they realize that resilience of identity, being able to construct this or that way and flexible is strength. You know, that's that's ego strength. That's that's what's that's good. That's selfless ego, if you will, something like that. So how do you fit those things together? You know, your acting skill and ability, ability to empathize with different beings of different types and your your study of the central teachings in the Dharma. Uh, uh, they fit very perfectly well, mm-hmm. very nicely. I mean, first, if you want to just talk about the simple act of what it takes to create a role, you need yes. to do the concentration, mm-hmm. you need to do the study, you need to do mm-hmm. the an- analysis of the role. Uh-huh. And that's that's three very basic things that we require in meditation, in, yes. in, in understanding, in acquiring knowledge. So that's the yes. first step. You're acquiring the knowledge of the character. Uh-huh. Who, do they, who are they? Where are they from? What do they uh-huh. want? What do they do to get what they want? So that's uh-huh. that that first part. And then the uh-huh. second part is, you know, like the, you know, from the generation stage to the creation stage kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So then you you have to become that person in one form or of another. You can't you can't judge them for their actions. Right. Right. You have to understand them. Why? What do they want? What does every human being want to be happy? Yes. Just yes. from one moment to the next. So that's what they want. But given their causes and conditions, yes. given their circumstances, they may do it a little differently than than you would. And, yes, and yes. that's but those are the tools that they have. So yes. you want, learn to understand those tools, learn to know why they use them and how they how they would use them. Yes. Even if it's something that it's completely mind boggling to you. Yes. Uh, it helps you better develop an understanding of the human condition in general. Yes, yes. Um, and once you start walking in that other person's shoes, you can see where their darkness or light is coming yes. from. You can yes. completely understand. So it makes it uh, very hard to be angry at people, makes it very uh-huh. hard to hate people. Uh-huh. You become a softer being, you become a kinder being because now you've walked in shoes that are not currently your own. I've never been yes. a mother, I've played a mother many times. Uh-huh. Of uh-huh. course, pretending to be a mother is not exactly the same as being one, but yes. Oh, just cool. the simple act of trying is going uh-huh. to give me an understanding sure. that is deeper than if I never would have tried at all. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. That's so well. That's, that's so genius. So you said concentration. You said analysis. And then the third thing, concentration. Uh, 
and analysis study, and, and study. study. And you analysis. must study, same as yeah. <laughs> we got to study so, a lot to be Buddhist. There's so much homework. Yeah, People don't realize. Just, you think I, you just go to the beach oh. and do yoga at sunset and you're going to get it. You have to read books. <laughs> You have homework. I have homework from you sitting, waiting. <laughs> it's so great. I'm so happy. It makes me, that's music to my ears, you know, because as you know, a lot of Buddhists do insist that they, oh, no, I don't want to study anything. I I'm just want to meditate. breathe from my heart. Exactly. Well, that's exactly. nice. It, it is works, nice. It but is. it's it only going to get you so far. Yes, yes, You need yes. to know the, the ingredients to the recipe. Yes, yes, yes. So Concentration, speak. study, and analysis. That is so full. Do you, do you, did you go to an acting studio sort of thing or do you have? Yes, you, uh, besides you performing arts, uh, besides performing arts, I then went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is an, an acting conservatory, the first yes, right. in the United States right, and got right, a, right. A, a degree in theater arts. Oh, fabulous. So, I did so that you're intensely. Gonna, do you teach? Do you teach now? Yourself? I did. I taught for the first time this year because of the pandemic allowed oh, me good. the opportunity to, to teach some kids some Shakespeare this year. Oh, which wow. Was, Really? Very unexpected turn of events, but uh, it's which, one which of my play? which plays. They were doing different plays for their college entrance exams, so they were doing different monologues. So we were uh, digging oh, into wow. what is the meaning, digging out, you know, what is wow. behind the words. It was really wonderful, wow. especially with with young young kids. That's amazing. That's a, and I would love to take your class. My goodness. <laughs> It's really good. I know some politicians. I'd like to have them take your class. <laughs> take an acting class. Who can know that because they get stuck sometimes, you know, and they mm -hmm. get very. Especially, my favorite is of course Al Gore. I loved. I always loved Al Gore, but he yes. would freeze in front of a camera, and then people okay. would think he was terribly boring. He was yes. actually he's very sweet and a really nice person. Yes, he he really is. He was he was our president yes. president in exile for eight years. I know. <laughs> Unfortunately, people are too aware of charisma, fooled by charisma. Uh, yeah, of course, they can be. But, you know, we want someone decent who has it, and that that we will get them. AOC has, for example. Yes, she does. She She's has. very likable. Yeah, but they don't, you know, so that, anyway. That would, then again, it depends on who you ask. Let's not even go there. <laughs> I know, I know. I do love her, though. You know, I met her, she, you know, her, her region in Queens. It's where mm -hmm. the Tibetan ghetto is, you know, the mm -hmm. Tibetan community. It's a mm -hmm. big 15,000 person Tibetan community there. And so they're her constituents. And she comes to their New Year's thing where I met her. Mm -hmm. you know? Wow. And I, and I think she's quite marvelous, actually. Yes. I really like Very intelligent, of course. Yes. yes. Really, really smart. So anyway, so, that's, so that is such a treasured thing, what you say. Study. And, I, you know, I, I remember Peter Sellers, the great comedian, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was once lamenting in some interview I read about how he had multiple personality and he couldn't remember who he was. Sometimes he thought he was one of his roles. You know, he would wow. go so deeply into it. Mm -hmm. And then I realized he probably had a shrink who told him that, well, you have to always be so and so, you know, mm -hmm. and that 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 ability to be like chameleon like and to be resilient as long as you can responsibly come back to to a thing where some you, sort of yeah some place, sort of yes. you know interactively responsible base is mm -hmm. actually a it's deep knowledge rather than a disease you know what i mean where you have to keep freaking out about it and, that and i was too, sad that he mm -hmm. didn't have a more a more enlightened person teaching him like an actor or like a shrink like you he, well, he, his reincarnation that... <laughs> better study with you <laughs> but that it's also that's also so helpful in practice when we uh, do so ego grasping. I am who I think yes, I yes. am. But you have yeah, to yeah. let all that at the door. And same when we're yeah. doing practices, when you're changing your face and changing shapes, yeah. you have to be able to let it go. Yeah. You use yeah. your imagination there. Yes, yes, fantastic. Really, you just amaze me. So what are, now? Where where are you going now? What is your what are your wishes for 2021? What do you oh. sort of want to get done and do and whatever? What's what's on your how do you see the world? What, what do you say? Uh, do you this was a big uh, big cleaning, you know, big purification, mm. right? Mm, yes. Like so many things happening at once, and we were forced to uh, really contemplate and figure out what is truly important when mm -hmm. a lot of things were taken away from us. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really brought to light problems that were already existing. Mm -hmm. uh, just put it right in your face because you, you weren't going to any parties. You weren't going to work. You weren't going to the movies. You were just 
here with yourself and here with your situations and here with mm -hmm. the world around you that you never really looked at before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it was very, you know, it's very tragic to see that maybe being out of work for a month or two can make someone homeless. We, not everyone thinks that way, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, that, that someone that is healthy can just fall ill very quickly and not mm -hmm. have the money to take care of themselves mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or get decent health, health care mm -hmm. that so many people think so uh, oppositely, but want exactly the same thing. That's almost mind boggling at, at yes, times because yes. you're both saying the same thing, but you're going completely opposite directions yeah, yeah. for the same result is almost, uh, it's it, mind boggling is the only word I can think of. <laughs> it, is. it is. Well, we need to take the money out of the prison system, put it in the education system. That's what yes. we really need to do, and the health I, system. That's a huge, huge that's factor in how people think, live, survive, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is how they are raised and what options they feel they have when they are young, mm -hmm. when they are mm -hmm. very, very small. If you feel mm -hmm. that one day you can grow up to be president, you yeah. might try. <laughs> but if you feel like your whole life you're just avoiding jail, that's probably yes. where you'll end up. It's those micro karma, yeah, micro karmic yeah, yeah. seeds yes, yes, that yes. go off constantly that, right. you know, yeah. the, the meet the killer halfway kind of thing. It's not yeah, that yeah. you were destined for that. It's you keep making these choices, even if consciously you don't think you are subconsciously yes, yes, of those little seeds are are popping off continuously and yeah, it will course. get you there anyway yes 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 it's and it must, it's terrible you know the the whole thing about you know what is it called uh, you know uh being in terror just to go driving because you're going to be pulled over for a light you know like a yeah. like a a red light or something and then yeah. you're going to be in jail forever you know because you, you might. didn't you know uh, stopped. What is it? This expression: something while driving, terrorized while uh, driving. Being black while driving. Black while. That's right. Yeah, crime being of being black while driving. while driving. It's just terrible. And you still see it in New York along the throughway. You'll see a black family and pulled over a bunch of cars there. It's really, and you can't do anything about it. You stopped and it practically. Of course, a lot of mo black and brown moms have to give their sons and daughters, but mostly their sons, the talk. You know, oh, which is yeah. you know. Don't wear this. Don't wear your hoodie up. Be respectful if you see an officer. Uh, don't wear caps. Don't walk down the yes. street at night. And that's terrible that you have it to is. constantly, it you is. know, and, and that that's also another thing that keeps you keep planting those seeds and they keep growing. It's just a never ending cycle. It's, so it's, it's a shame. Crippling. It's, crippling. it's a shame. And we have to fix it really fast. And it's so ironic. We have the guy who wouldn't listen to Anita Hill who made the crime bill, who did this and that, and he's the one who's now supposedly going to help us clean it up. But, but, right. I, but he, you know, it wasn't my pick, naturally. But in a way, since Clyburn said that's the one we think can get us free of the even worse thing, then we'll mm -hmm. go with it and we'll try to do it. And maybe, you know, maybe he'll realize how, how wrong he has been, it seems to. Choice of Kamala encouraged mm -hmm. me a lot. Yes. It yes, really did. I think so. Well, that's great. Let's hope so. Well, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna try to help them, but I'm also pushing the squad as hard as I can. <laughs> I know you are. You're I a big am. fan of the squad. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, I totally am. You know, and uh, there's this one place where you know, like Nancy, who's like the husband is a banker and whatever, you know, but she, her whole thing came with her relationship with His Holiness. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. We pay, we had a big uh, conference. Tibet House did in San Francisco in '97, and we made her the speaker. Mm -hmm. For the, you know, Willie Brown, you know, he also welcomed, but then we had her be the main political figure in San Francisco, and we ran afoul of, of uh, Feinstein because of that. But she was like, you know, letting China in the door everywhere at that time, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the 90s. And so we didn't want to have her acting like she was the great protector of Tibet, you know, mm -hmm. although she did sometimes has done some decent things. But so that's how Nancy got started, you know, and then she's so I tried to get. AOC to find the vein <laughs> of the Tibetan thing to be friendly, mm -hmm. in spite of being opposed on many, many issues, you know, mm -hmm. to sort of go slow, wait your turn. And now if COVID has shown, Nancy, if, if anybody but any really dense person has shown, there's no time mm -hmm. to waste. Well, there is no time anymore to say later, we'll get to it. We <laughs> never know. We never no, know. No. We don't have the time. We don't. It, it we will don't. explode. We've if never we had the time. Yeah, we've never had it. And, you know, you know, 
they shot Lincoln and then they started their anti-reconstruction or their horrible business that they did. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. all coming apart now. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to win that war finally for dear old Lincoln. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to. We must, you know, with your help, you know. So anyway, so good. So so do you think it'll work out? What do you uh, what, what you have roots now in Sweden as well as in the US and New York? Yes. What do you yes. think? What, you're going to work in Europe a little bit or you're coming back? I'm hoping or? I'm hoping so. I mean, the thing is, uh, things started to open up a little bit and then it ca came back. It keeps yes. going in waves. And I, yes. you know, if, it feels like the solution is everyone just stop, go inside for a couple of weeks. Yes. And then yes. We'll come back yes. because these waves just keep just just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, because yes. we do want to get back to work. We do want to keep, you yes. know, making music and going on tour, playing concerts. We do want to keep making movies and doing plays and oh, sitting in should. a room. We do want to do those yes. things. These Zoom things are yes. nice and fun, but it's never the same as as no. being in a room together, you know. It uh, so it hopefully isn't. it will it will work out soon. It will. It will. Well, I, I look forward to seeing you when you come back. And uh, and uh, you must come and visit us at Menla. Maybe you can do a little retreat. We don't I have would, somebody. I, I'm in we don't have anybody to one. look up your calendar. We don't have anybody like that. You have to do it yourself. I'm in you, dire your, need for one. Yes. Did your partner ever do a retreat? Is he? Did he know no. Menla? Or no, he didn't ever do. He's Kenser not Rinpoche. Buddhist. No, he's never knew Kensar Rinpoche. Uh, Kensar Rinpoche passed many years after he and I were got right, together. Right. Well, that's cool. You know. You know. His Holiness is into this thing that everybody should keep. The religion of their abuelita. Yeah. <laughs> he wants everybody to stay with that and then learn from, say, Buddhism or Islam or Sufism or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Actually, my latest thing that I'm really excited about is Sikhism. Mm -hmm. That Guru Nanak guy was unbelievable. Cool. I don't know if yeah. you ever looked into him. He, <laughs> yes. He's amazing. Yes, you know, he's yes. exact contemporary, about 150 miles apart of mm -hmm. the second Dalai Lama. Really? And, and their birth and death dates are very close. Very similar. Very similar, and he's in the middle of the Hindu Muslim thing, mm -hmm. you know, in the in that 15th century, 16th century, mm -hmm. and uh, 15th, 16th century, and he's he's you know, Kaaba's everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Hindu gods are fine too, everybody's happy, you know, and he's in the middle of that singing songs, you know, mm -hmm. unbelievable. I, I really like the Ekomkar. Ekumkar Satnam, you know, it has its own thing. I really, I, I was, I didn't really get what they were, where they were at the Sikhs because right later they got persecuted mm -hmm. 10 generations down and then they got sort of fierce. But he was wide open, you know, and but nobody messed with him because he, there was so much happiness radiating outward. You know? <laughs> he was like immune, you know, to the prejudices in his own mm -hmm. time, more or less, you know. <laughs> you know, like they have a story they tell where he would, he went on the Hajj at one point himself. Uh -huh. And then they say that every time he lay in whatever direction, the the, the Kaaba kept moving. So <laughs> it was in front of his feet were headed toward the Kaaba. And then the Orthodox were really pretty mad with him. And so he would switch and then the Kaaba would move. <laughs> and then as he would try to tell them it's everywhere. The Holy One is everywhere. Don't don't be idolatrous about a yes. building, you know. <laughs> about a building. Exactly. But that's pretty pretty gutsy to do in 15 whatever you know? i would say it's pretty gutsy to do now too <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly pretty gutsy to do now so anyway what i'm just what i meant to say was that i i after being a, what you might think of as a convert from protestantism you know but but i was never really you know died in the bull about that so it wasn't really converted out of i was really secular you could say mm -hmm. and uh and but then it made me really appreciate the good side of Christianity. Later. Later with the, Later the, the on. Dharma did, you know, so that's the Dalai Lama's Same. thing, you know. Yeah, and he used to tell me stuff like, well, you don't want to be critical of people just because they're not exactly doing what you do, you know. Exactly. What is this, you know. And uh, and finally, you know, the Kala Chakra, all the different religions come out of his different faces. Mm -hmm. And in the Vimalakirti, did you read my Vimalakirti translation? Did you read my Vimalakirti translation? I listened to your whole uh, your your teaching on it. Oh, you did. Oh, yes. Did. Did you, Wonderful. Did you, did you did you look at the original? I mean, whatever you can get through English of the original. Yeah, amazing yeah. Work. It's amazing yes. that guy. He's amazing. <laughs> but he said, then you know, one time Manjushri says to him in there those back and forth that they do. He says, "Where's the enlightenment of the Buddha to be found?" And he says, "Oh, in the sixty-two non-Buddhist teachings, you find it." <laughs> 
That's right. There it is. There it is. There so I'm just is. saying, I'm just saying it's it's fine. You know, it's it's nice to have you know family communality, but it also it's nice that everyone is finding it everywhere. It's a key thing, it's what I'm saying. The key thing, key happiness. <laughs> All depends on the way the heart approaches it. You know, I have uh, an aunt, my uh, my loving aunt, uh, her Titi Ruti, <laughs> who is a very devout Christian woman. But when she prays, you know, the walls shake because it's so full of love, That's so it. full of uh, warmth. That's it. If you want to say Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. She's got it. <laughs> she and, does. And, and that's what I aspire. You know, I aspire yes, yes, to that. Yes, that's yes. what is, she is. Pure love, radiation, radiation. Yes. Yes. We're together on that one. We are 100% yes. together. Or I try to be. I'm not as good as you. I don't pretend to be. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if you know that, but I make a big fuss out of because my partner is a Valkyrie, you understand? Yeah, she is. <laughs> and, uh, so I make, I make a big fuss out of a confessional out of the fact that on the path to enlightenment, under whatever tradition, the female of the human species is ahead. A it's, a fake, it's a fake thing that in, even in history of Buddhism, the males are always the ones, oh yeah, this one, Bodhidharma, and that one. But they all have mothers and grandmothers and female people who are teaching them. But because of the patriarchality of the Asian societies, they don't, the women don't get the name. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're, they're not educated to write the books, unfortunately, usually, and so on. So, but, and so they have this false idea. They think, people think enlightenment is something about, it's like, you know, men are better at math or some bullshit <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the key of enlightenment is compassion and empathy and the ability to identify with others and to realize that you are an oxytocin being, mm -hmm. not not a cortisol being. <laughs> and so the men have to shape up and sit down and listen. You know, you know that uh, old saying, the, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that, but I would say- It's an I, old uh, Italian uh, expression. The man is the head, the capo di casa, and the woman really? turns, turns the head I the way see. it needs to go. Oh, okay, the neck, I wouldn't have thought, but that's, that's the neck is the throat, cha heart cha throat chakra, mm -hmm. you know, that's the mm -hmm. speech. Samboga Kaya. That's, <laughs> Samboga Kaya, that's right. a speech. That's a right. speech. And it's also the bliss. Mm -hmm. It's the bliss chakra and the speech chakra, the ganglion nerve center at the mm -hmm. neck. The head is a little bit fierce, you know, mm -hmm. and it's the emanation chakra. You know? emanation and of course, chakra. the heart then, both meat and the heart. You know? mm -hmm. So anyway, that's really interesting. I didn't know that one. <laughs> That's an, old, that's an old saying <laughs> they, we got in Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, well, listen, listen, uh, Jessica, we, uh, we got to go pretty soon. Oh, okay. But you know what? This is only the beginning. I hope I really would like to talk to you again a little more at length. Anytime. Sometime. Anytime. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to leave you with one clue. Maybe we can talk about that the next time. Okay. And that is, did you ever run into the scholarship and the thesis that Shakespeare was actually written by a Jewish Italian woman. <laughs> Her name was Emilia Bassano. Now I got some more homework from you to do. Let's see, Emilia Bassano. Emilia Bassano. I'm, I'm writing it down. I think you, because you're a teacher, that you might really, I think it'd be very interesting for you to, to examine that, that, uh, that these two books by a guy named, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. I'll tell you next time. <laughs> and it's amazing. You know, it really is amazing. It's like this kind of alternative reality stuff, but it's really scholarly. Analysis of Latin and Greek and Aramaic and the whole thing. And it's like the alternative scholarship about Abe Lincoln. Wow. Did you know that about him? No. Did they say, is it that he's part black or? Jewish. Jewish. Mother and was Jewish. There's a, okay. but of course, the wasp is completely. And then negative. Columbus was an Italian. That's the other one. Oh, I don't know. Really? I don't know that one. But he was a Portuguese, a Portuguese oh. bastard child. Really? <laughs> I didn't there's, know that. There's a lot of those, thing, those stories out there. <laughs> That's really interesting. <laughs> anyway, I like that. I like both of that one. But Emilia Bassano is the one that really. All right. I will check it out. Really gets me, you know. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, Shakespeare, she was, maybe he was a uh, boyfriend sort of thing, but he was an actor, you know, he wasn't really a writer. You know? mm -hmm. When he died, there were no papers in his house. Everybody knows that. But they think it was mm -hmm. some English noble man who did mm -hmm. it, you know, Earl of Essex mm -hmm. or something. They think mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the regular WASP scholars, but this scholarship <laughs> is amazing, you know, and for an actor and a, and a Dharma person and an enlightened person like you, I think you'd be really interested. Doesn't awesome. diminish Jesus at all, but it shows, no. it shows how the Romans distorted the thing. Mm -hmm. It's actually the, the, the essence of it, you know, and how she, she, re, she revived the thing subliminally. Mm -hmm. At around the same time as the King James Bible, mm -hmm. but but you couldn't do it as a woman and also an immigrant woman. Of course not. From England from <laughs> Italy. <laughs> of course not. I love it though. Anyway, I'm <laughs> I'm just really excited to finally meet you, Jessica. Me what too. A, it's been a long a time if coming. I could, if I could, if we had a proper proper <laughs> thing, I could transmit this Kodak to you. I got it. I got it. You, you met His yeah. Holiness a number of times, right? Yes, a number of times, I'm se sure several times over the years. We've been in a room together. You and I have been yeah. in a room together many times over really? Really? the last twenty something years with really? Billy Rinpoche and uh, uh, His Holiness's teachings, but we never got to meet. I till can't now. believe I did not recognize Jessica uh, Rinpoche. <laughs> I really can't believe it. But I oh. do now. I do now. Thank but, you so much. No, thank you for, for just inviting me to speak. It's an honor to, for, to finally connect with you heart to heart, no, you know, I, directly. So thank you. Uh, thank you, thank too. You for everything. Thank and you. we'll be talking a lot more. We just yes. scratched the surface. We you know? just got started. We just got yes, started. Yes, we didn't even talk about the heavy metal Buddhism stuff. Oh, I like to hear about that. <laughs> well, I, 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 know the, I know the people in San Francisco, the group, what are they called? The, 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 you know. The ones in San Francisco who played with the 49ers, you know, the heavy metal people. The, yes, yes. What's their name? I can't remember now. The old age. But I know those guys. Okay. The, the old Hans or something, the old Danish guy who founded uh -huh. the lineage of those guys. Yeah. He's a Dharma, Enigma Dharma yeah. guy. Yeah. I don't know if you ever met them. No, you know, I don't think so. They're really quite, they're one, they're one of the heavy, original heavy metal types and they're very big <laughs> in San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. You know, they're based there and they okay. play they play on the 49ers in the stadium all the time. Once a year, they have a big tradition out there. Okay. You know, I'll find that out. San Francisco, you will, you will. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. Love you very hasta, much. Here. Hasta, I, luego. hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta, hasta luego, profesor. <laughs> hasta okay. luego. Jessica Rinpoche. Okay. Bye-bye. Brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. Menla membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House Menla membership, please visit our websites at tibethouse.us and menla.org.